Hello, my name is Erica, and today I'm going to be reading The Goose That Laid the Golden Eggs. Deep in the woods stood a little cottage. It was so tumbled down it looked as if it were growing back into the ground. Ivy encrusted the walls, flowers sprouted out of the roof, and the mice ran in and out of the door. Inside, on a straw-covered floor, sat a snow-white goose, cackling away as she laid an egg. A man rushed into the room. At last, we can have our supper, he cried. His wife brought out the frying pan and placed it over the fire, while the man slid his head under the goose's soft, fluffy down. His fingers closed over something cold and hard. A stone? He sighed as he pulled it out. The object was shaped like an egg, only heavier, harder. What is it? asked his wife. I don't know, the man replied. He carried it over to where a ray of sunlight came streaming in through a hole in the roof. The object glittered. They gasped. It couldn't be, said his wife. It is. It really is, cried the man. Gold, they shouted gleefully together. A golden egg. But how, asked the man. He looked from the shiny, sparkling egg to their little white goose in wonder. Never mind how, muttered his wife. You must go straight to market it in the morning and sell it. We're going to be rich, rich. And they began to dance around their room, singing and laughing for joy. At first light, the man set out through the woods, the egg in his pocket, humming a giddy tune. He wandered through the hustle and bustle of the market until he found what he wanted, a rickety stall with a large set of scales. An old man sat behind the counter calling, Get your money for gold! I'll give you the best prices! I'll take necklaces, bracelets, goblets! How much money would I get for this? asked the man, gingerly taking the golden egg out of his pocket and placing it on the scales. The old man raised his eyebrows. He picked up his magnifying glass. Remarkable, he said, standing it close. Pure gold, and it's been made to look exactly like an egg. I've never seen anything like it. He pulled out bag after bag of coins and handed them to the man. As if in a dream, the man floated from stall to stall, buying everything he wanted and lots of things he didn't, just because he could. He bought dresses for his wife and a fine suit for himself, jewels and flowers and furniture and food. He bought so much there was no way he could carry it all. He spent the last of his money on a donkey and cart, loaded up his goods, and rode home in triumph. His wife was delighted. She tried on dress after dress, trailing around as she admired herself in their new gilt mirror. Then they sat down together and gorged themselves on the delicious food. Quail's eggs and caviar, fine wines and exotic fruit. But as the meal drew to a close, the woman sighed with disappointment. I want more, she said hungrily. More food? asked the man in amazement, thinking of all they'd eaten. No, more money, said his wife, her eyes glinting. I want enough money to live in a fine house and eat like this forever. I want to sleep on silken sheets, eat from golden plates, and have jewels dripping from my fingers. They both looked at their goose hopefully. She began to cackle, they folks hardly daring to breathe. Did she? Could she have? The woman wondered. With trembling hands, the man reached under the goose, and his heart sank as once more she felt the cold, hard shape of a golden egg. After that, the goose laid a new golden egg each day. The man and his wife grew rich and fat. They left their little cottage and bought a grand house and as many grand things as they could to go in it. They had servants by the dozen, thick velvet carpets, fountains in the garden, and walkways studded with jewels. But the more they had, the more they wanted. I need a team of twenty white horses, pulling a silk-lined carriage, said the woman, and I'm getting bored with all my dresses. I want to buy some more this minute. But our goose only lays one egg a day, the man pointed out, and the money trickles away like water. We spend it as soon as we get it. You'll just have to wait for the goose to lay more eggs. 
His wife went outside to the shed where they now kept their goose. A heavy lock hung from the door, but inside the goose had been given every luxury: satin cushions to sit on, fresh straw every day, and curtains on the windows. The woman took a good look at the goose, smiling and patting her on the head. But all that time she was thinking, "I'm sure that goose is full of gold. It must be sitting in her belly, great big gobbets of it." If we cut her open, we'd get all the gold at once. That night, she told her husband her plan. Let's go now while she's asleep. We'll cut her open and grab all the gold. She won't feel a thing. We'll never have to wait for her to lay another egg. What a brilliant idea! Agreed the man, and they crept out into the night. They unlocked the goose's door and quickly cut her open. The woman let out an angry scream. There was no gold inside the goose, just meat and bone like any other bird. What will we do now? She asked in horror, looking at the sorry remains of their little white goose. But there was nothing they could do. With no goose, they had no more golden eggs, and with no golden eggs, they had no money to buy things. First, their servants had to go, then all their fine things—jewels, furniture, even the paintings on the walls. Then the house itself had to be sold, and the man and his wife had nowhere to go but their tumble-down cottage in the woods. The woman kept her dresses, but they grew shabby and ragged. Soon, all they had to remind themselves of their riches was the empty space on their cottage floor, where their little white goose had once sat and laid her magical golden eggs. The end. <laughs> I hope you like this video and please subscribe to my channel.